Hey, True Believers England Teen here with another weekly top 10 comics sold to readers. That's right, this is what people are picking up, buying, and walking out of the comic shop with. Now, Comicron's a great list, but that tells you what the comic shops are ordering. This is what people want to buy. Shock and surprise. Now we're going to find out if DC or Marvel wins the hard copies, then we're going to go over to Comixology and see which one wins the digital week as well. But first, we got to pay homage to these people right here. They're, they're uh, participating in this particular list here. So if you're in the area, by all means, stop on in. See what they got. Maybe buy something. Say hello. And uh, don't forget to support your own local comic shop. Now remember this is Bleeding Cool, so by all means, grain of salt. Now let's get this party started. Off the countdown at number 10 is Titans, number 28. Number 9 gives us X-Men Red, number 9. At number 8, we have The Flash, number 57. At number 7, we have Spider-Girls, number 1. In the number 6 slot, we have Justice League Odyssey, number 2. At number 5, we have Wonder Woman number 57, while at number 4, we have Amazing Spider-Man number 8. At number 3, we have Return of Wolverine number 2. And at number 2, we have the Brian Michael Bendis abomination that is Action Comics 1004. And at number 1 is Detective Comics 991. There you go, gang. For me, it was a little bit of a weak week. Ha ha ha. Uh, not, not a whole bunch that really had me excited. DC won, of course. They had Detective Comics, Action Comics. They had Wonder Woman, Justice League Odyssey, The Flash, and Titans. So it was 6-4. to four. In the top 5, however, Marvel had Return of Wolverine and Amazing Spider-Man. And of course, the three in the bottom were Spider-Girl, X-Men Red, and that's it there you go <laughs> so anyway uh yeah let, i i know i thought it was a, a, a not a particularly strong week but what did the shop owners think of it this was a very strong week lots of great selling books return of wolverine number two was our best selling book of the week but jla jl odyssey excuse me action wonder woman and detective all put impressive numbers in fact, all of our top 20 books had very strong sales this week. Marvel and DC dominated our top 20 with just about an even split. Foil covers and crossovers do seem to be adding to sales a bit. I like it. Hopefully sales stay up because of the great stories inside. Well, I guess I stand corrected as far as it being a weak week, but I was just talking about things I was excited about. However, I do have a theory on the differences in sales, I just want to see how digital goes before I speak it. This week was kind of uneventful, despite being full of events, with Wonder Woman creeping really close to the top spot, which surprised me. Detective was number one, as any Batman book usually is. What I have noticed is that with each successive week, the What If books have sold less and less. This week seemed to be met with a total indifference. Honorable mention to Black Panther vs. Deadpool, which could have made the list if people hadn't looked at the art inside and put it back. Several customers commented on the ugly art and declined it. I have four videos today. At midnight last night, I released Kiss and Old Lady Harley reviews. You've got this one. The next one, however, is going to be a review of that Black Panther Deadpool. Do not miss it. You're going to want to see it. Trust me on that. Also, along with that, I do review an independent comic, usually a number one, just to get you know, a little attention to a new independent comic book. A bit of a light week, with the only real tentpole ongoing hitting the shelves being Amazing Spider-Man. Unsurprisingly, Spidey sits at the top of the list, hanging out with Detective Comics, Action Comics, Wonder Woman, and The Return of Wolverine. The bottom half of the list it, it, it contains a couple of Marvel's stronger ongoing titles, X-Men Red and Punisher, along with the almost certainly focus grouped into existence Black Panther vs. Deadpool, bringing up the very rear. We've got some of the more fun and esoteric offerings from both publishers with Infinity Wars, Arachnite, and the Terrifics. Look, I've never hidden my bias towards DC. I like DC better than Marvel. I do. And having said that, 
there's nothing Infinity Wars that deserves to be in the same sentence in comparison to anything good with the Terrifics. This week's top 10 split is 6 DC for Marvel, but the spread between 1st place and 10th place is only 8 copies. So we had a lot of mid-list books clustered at more or less the same sales plateau. There's only another 4 copy spread between the 10th place book and the 20th place book. This occurs when publishers offer a week with no strong tentpole titles to bring in buyers. The overall customer count is lower with no real sales standout. That's kind of how I felt towards the week. Yeah, the Terrifics were there and Detective Comics I like, but for the most part it was like, oh, okay, well, I want to read these, but there was not a lot of stuff where it's like, woohoo, I have to read this. Terrifics aside. So, yeah, it's kind of the sales just kind of mimicked my attitude towards this week comic books. But that's just me. There's There might be something you were really excited about. But there you go. So, at this point, we're going to go on over to Comixology, the world's biggest digital comic book shop, and we're going to find out who wins the digital week. Is it Marvel or DC? DC owned the hard copies. And let's see how this goes. At number 10, we have Titans number 28. Number 9 brings us Flash number 57. Number 8 brings us Justice League Odyssey number 2. X-Men Red number 9 makes it into 7th place, as Spider-Geddon number 2 makes it into 6th. At number 5, we have Detective Comics 991, while at number 4, we have Wonder Woman number 57. Number 3 brings us Amazing Spider-Man number 8, while in the runner-up position at number 2, we have Return of the Wolverine number 2. And in the number one spot, we have The Anal Wart in Search of Ass Cream, written by Brian Michael Bendis of Action Comics 1004. All right, so we have a bit of a repeat of the, uh, the numbers. Floppies were, or hard covers, as I like to, or hard copies, what I like to call them, went to DC 6 to 4, and it went to DC in the top 10 as, as well. At number 10, we had Titans. Number 9 was Flash. Number 8 was Justice League Odyssey. And then you had at number 5, Detective Comics. Number 4 was Wonder Woman. And number 1 was Action Comics. While Marvel had at number 2, Return of Wolverine. Number 3 was Amazing Spider-Man. Number 6 was Spider-Geddon. And at number 7, X-Men Red. And just for poops and giggles, I like to check out all the way up to the top 20. So let's see. Now, granted, Marvel usually owns the top 20, so DC is in for a fight, even there, uh, even though they're already up by two. At number 11, we have Books of Magic. Number one, it is now seven to four, DC. At number 12, we have Doctor Opera. Number 25, it's now seven to five, DC. At number 13 is The Terrifics, number 9. It's now 8 to 5 DC's favor. At number 14, we have Spider Gwen, Ghost Spider, number 1. It's now 8 to 6 DC's favor. At number 15, we have Rat Queens, number 12, ensuring that we have a clear winner between DC and Marvel. At number 16, we have X Men Black, Juggernaut, number 1. So it's now 8 to 7 DC's favor. And at number 17, Spider-Girls number 1 ties it up 8-8. Eight to eight. At number 18, we have Soldier Supreme number 2 making it 9-8 to eight in Marvel's favor. And then a hit by What If Thor Was Raised by Frost Johnson, Giants to make it 10-8. to eight. And just one more nail in the coffin at number 20 is the Arachnite. And Marvel wins the week. So there you go. Uh, you spread it out, and Marvel wins. So, you know what? We always talk about, wow, Marvel stinks, and they're all, but, but they are exciting readers to buy again. And I wish ex readers were that excited over DC books. They're usually superior. Marvel tends to put out a lot more gimmicks. However, this is the theory I had. People love DC's covers. It doesn't matter if you can if you get it digital. If you buy it digital, you can pull those art gym covers and all that kind of stuff off the internet all you want anyway. 
for for screensaver and stuff. But I think people want those covers. They're beautiful and they far outshine Marvel, left, right, up, down, and center. But I wonder if people are reading it and enjoying the stories more, which I am. I can honestly say that for me, but I just wonder if other people are doing it as well. So there you go. Hard copies go to DC. Digital goes to Marvel. It's a tale as old as time. So those are my thoughts on the whole countdown thing. What are yours? What do you think is too high? What do you think is too low? And what do you think is missing or should not even be anywhere near a top 10 or a top 20 countdown? And also... And think about this hard. How much of an anal polyp is Brian Michael Bendis' writing these days and how he's treating Action Comics and the Superman family? Let me know that in the comments below as well. And if you like these videos, which I know you do, <laughs> please click like, share. Of course, that gets word out about the channel. And don't forget to hit that uh, subscription if you haven't done it already in the notification bell. And this is the way I'm trying to make a living. Aren't we all trying to make a living? But this is the way I'm trying to do it. So please help out the channel. Go on over to Patreon. Drop a dollar in the tell. The link's in the description below. Like, thank everybody who's already done that. And to everyone, all of the true believers, thank you very, very much for watching.